So I'm in the office today, guys, and I thought I would do one of these uh, studio setup kind of videos where I show you guys my office setup, some of the equipment I've got, because I've had people request this, mainly because obviously I've got a lot of new equipment in here in the last four or five weeks since moving into the new office. You guys have probably seen some of it on camera. You guys probably noticed that I've been experimenting with a lot of things on camera, you know, changing uh, camera angles, playing with the lighting, doing a lot of different kind of video formats. The last four or five weeks of making content on the channel have been really fun. I, I've really enjoyed it, and uh, honestly, uh, it's been refreshing. It really has. It's, it's completely recharged me. I'm not burnt out at all, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been great. I, this is probably the best move I ever made was renting this office and getting a proper studio space. And there's only really one downside to this location is sometimes the internet kind of craps out on you. The internet, the connection is, is strong when I have internet, but today I got here this morning and I was going to do another video. I had something else planned, but I needed to be able to connect to the internet to do this video. And the internet was down this morning. So I went to the gym. I have my gym bag over here. Oh, let's see, you guys can see my gym bag sitting on the floor. I always have a, a set of clothes. So I changed into, you know, some sweatpants and a t-shirt, my Under Armour athletic shoes. I went to the gym, which is just two miles away from my office. That's part of the reason why I chose this location. It's really close to the gym I work out at. So I went and spent two hours at the gym. Come back, the internet is still down. And I didn't want to, I didn't want it to be a completely wasted day. So since people have asked for this video, Let's look around the office a bit. Now, when you first walk into the office, the first thing you'd probably notice is that all four walls are covered in these acoustic panels. Not completely covered, but I created these sections of acoustic panels. They're two foot by three foot in dimension, and there's about 10 inches of space that I put in between each, and it covers all four walls here, except for, obviously, I have a window that I've got a curtain behind because, obviously, the sunlight would really affect uh, lighting for the videos, but really it took, I think, 16 of these two by three sections to cover the four walls. And I, I really uh, have to say that they turned out really well for not really knowing what we were doing. I had help from one of my sisters. She's kind of an arts and crafts kind of person. And without her, it probably would have turned out a lot worse. You can see some gaps here in between the panels. So what these are, these foam panels, these black foam panels, they're one foot by one foot. And uh, we attached it to foam poster board. And uh, it, it turned out great. That, but the only problem is you do see some of the white poster board in between the black panels. And what I've been doing is I've got some paint here. I've got a, a paint can and a small paintbrush. And I've been trying to fill in those gaps every so often. Every few days, I'll go around and just fill in some of those gaps. Like this one here had a really bad gap but you can't really tell because I've actually painted the gaps in it. But this one here, I haven't got around to yet. I really need to fill that in. The ones I, I filled in immediately were the ones that are typically on camera. So you got my camera over here behind my monitors. So, you know, those in that area of the video, I've touched those up because everybody, you, you would immediately see the big white gaps between the panels if I had left those. But some of these that are not usually in the camera frame, I need to touch these up. Probably the next thing most people would notice is the lighting in the room because I have three very tall uh, LED light stands. So this one here is an umbrella light from Limo Studio. These are not very expensive lights. I have uh, two this size and I have a third one that's about half that size. And to be honest, they're okay, but they are not, you know, I mean, they're cheap because they are not adjustable. You can't adjust how bright the light is. It's just a standard like compact fluorescent bulb behind the umbrella. But uh, the better purchase I made, and I've had these lights for a couple of years now, are these Favatech LED stands here. And these are great because you can actually adjust the brightness. It can be very, very dim light, or it can be actually quite bright. You can also adjust the color temperature on the Favatech. You can have it, you know, this bright white light, or you can adjust it to more of a daylight orangish kind of color. Moving on, I've got this bookshelf that was actually in the office when I moved in. I just threw some boxes and some equipment, uh, equipment I either don't use, or in some cases, these are just empty boxes that, you know, I've got equipment 
that is, uh, you know, for example, like the audio equipment here. This is my uh, EQ that is actually on the server rack here. That's just the box for it. I just thought it hey, made a nice decoration. Instead of having an empty shelf, you know, uh, put something on it. And, and I learned this trick uh, oh, when, really when I first started the YouTube channel back in the day. You know, I used to just get empty boxes from equipment and I would just put it like on the wall behind me just so I had some kind of backdrop. You know, you, you never want like a bare or an empty backdrop. It just doesn't look good on camera. Of course, I have my C-Matrix server there. That is a, uh, is that the Lenovo ThinkPad? That's the E535. And it's a very old laptop. It doesn't have good specs. It's not something, it doesn't have a battery that holds charge either. That's why it's not at home. Why I tell you guys I don't have a home computer right now. That thing is strictly to serve up C matrix for backgrounds on my videos. You guys see my uh, Buddha statue that makes an appearance in most of my videos. And then just more boxes such as the Elgato boxes there. Those are the Elgato Master Mount and the Elgato Flex Arms. And I purchased these just in the last month or so. And I purchased a bunch of them. When I purchased the first one, I was so blown away by it that I actually purchased a bunch. So let me show you what the Elgato uh, mount is. So this is the Elgato. It's just a clamp mount. And it's really cool because it's got adjustable heights. It's got these flex arms that you attach to it and you can bend and move around and then you can tighten and they hold really tight. They're, they're really fantastic arms. And then, you know, I bought one. I bought the master mount and the flex arm just for this camera because I needed a camera mount in this office. And then once I put it together, I was so blown away by it. I, I ordered a second one. And even though I had no real use for it, I ordered a second one. And then when I got it, I was like, wouldn't it be cool if you could actually use the Elgato Master Mountain Flex Arm for a microphone stand? Because this desk here is actually a very wide desk. It's three foot wide. And the typical like scissor arms that you would use for a microphone, like the Rode PSA1 there, you know, you, there's no way it's going to make it three foot across this disc. You know, if I mounted it back here and then ha it had to go over my three monitors to make it to where it would be close enough to where I could actually speak into the microphone, th there's just no way. Even, uh, even adding uh, like an extension, I had a one foot extension that I tried to use with it. It still just didn't, it didn't make sense. So I needed something that would actually you know, rise above the three monitors and then go at least three foot across the disc so I could actually speak into the microphone and this Elgato actually works. <laughs> what I did is I, I bought the master mount again, so the, just the standard arm and I, of course I raised it, uh, not as high as it can go, but I raised it pretty high and then I added the flex arm to it plus one extra piece. I actually took one section of flex arm from the camera flex arm here because I didn't need it and added the extra section to that, and it just does work, <laughs> and it, it's perfect. Uh, and then, because that one worked so good, I actually ordered a third one. I ordered a third set, the master mount and the flex arm. I've got it actually mounted to the top of this bookcase here, because I just unscrew this here, and this mount pulls out, and then all I do is I go and unscrew this last section of the camera mount, and then just put it right there. And that's the video you guys saw me recording yesterday. That angle was my camera was attached to that arm. I just simply unscrew that one and then go put it on that. <laughs> These things are just so cool. So I've ordered three uh, of each of the master mounts and the uh, flex arms from Elgato. And, and they're by far the coolest things ever. I may actually order more because there's just infinite uses for these things. Now, one thing is they are designed to hold cameras. So the, the last section here has a quarter inch uh, male uh, receiver there. And of course that is to screw in a camera, but to do a microphone, you know, I had to get a little creative, not that creative because they're pretty common pieces of equipment. There is an adapter. You can get a quarter inch to a five eighths inch adapter. And then of course it would screw in to uh, your microphone receivers. Now for microphones, I've had the same microphone for a while now. This is the ElectroVoice RE27ND, and uh, it's a fantastic microphone. This is a dynamic microphone because 
I'm not in a place that is well treated as far as sound. I, you, you'll hear other people in some of the other office suites in this building. Also, there is a train track very close to this building, and the train does run on occasion, and, and you, you guys will hear that. Even on a dynamic mic, you'll probably hear some of the noise in this office, but on a condenser mic, it would be very noticeable. So dynamic mics are best if you're recording in a noisy environment, let's say. Um, before, what I was using was I was using the Blue Baby Bottle SL, which was a fantastic mic. I loved the sound on the Blue Baby Bottle, but it was a condenser mic, and therefore it did pick up a little bit more background noise than I wanted, so I wanted to move to dynamic mics, so I moved to the Electrovoice RE27ND. Now, this particular microphone, it's not terribly cheap. I want to say typically you'll find it around $500.00. Um, but then it's actually more than $500 because that's $500 just for the microphone and the little shock mount, the little rubber bands and the, the frame there. You also need the actual mount. The mount's going to cost you, I want to say nearly $100 itself. And then most people are going to want a pop filter and the pop filter that's actually designed for the Electro Voice of microphones, you know, this little clamp that ha then has the metal arm with the you know, the ring, the pop filter at the end, that is not terribly cheap either. I want to say I paid 40 or 50 bucks for that thing. So you're looking at about, you know, six, $700, especially once you, you got to add a, a, some kind of arm to it, a scissor arm or some kind of boom arm, if you didn't already have a microphone arm. So, uh, you know, these are expensive purchases, but they're well worth it. I, I do think the audio has been uh, improved a lot by you know, the microphone decisions as far as moving to the Electro Voice. I do think, uh, for noise especially, I, I think you guys hear less of the ambient background stuff that goes on than when I was using the old Blue Baby Bottle. And obviously I'm using triple monitors. I've, I've used triple monitors for years. I, I just can't get away from it, especially when you're recording, you're recording in OBS. I like having one monitor dedicated to having OBS on it all the time where I can actually see exactly what I'm recording. It's ex especially useful for live streaming. You know, I want to see exactly what you guys are seeing because, you know, no, I'm not going to have a browser open on YouTube and listening to it because it would kind of cause a feedback. But at least in OBS, I can actually see the scenes as they're being streamed to you guys. So triple monitors. I could never go back to just a single monitor, not for doing this kind of work. I've had uh, these three monitors for like six or seven years. They're uh, AOC is the, the brand. I, I don't know the model number. They're 24 inch monitors. And uh, I, like I said, I've had them for a while. They're getting kind of old. And what I was going to do is I was going to replace these. I actually ordered three of the newer AOC monitors. So I've got three of these. These are 24 or actually 24 and a half inch, you know, slightly bigger, but mostly the same. And what I'm going to do is three of these monitors, probably the three old ones, will probably stay here at the office. So these three here, I'm probably not going to move, but the three new ones are going to go to my house. And uh, because I will eventually have a computer that can do some work at my house and I will need three monitors there because again, I'm just so used to using three monitors. Uh, it just, there's no way I could go back to a single monitor. Now this particular, I, I wish I had the box so I could tell you the model number of this particular uh, monitor. It wasn't terribly expensive though. I want to say I paid about 130, 140 bucks for each monitor. Now looking at this disc, let's just go over a little bit about uh, the equipment that's on this disc. This keyboard here, this very strange looking keyboard, is the Ergodox Easy. I love this keyboard. I bought it about two years ago. I made uh, a couple of videos about the Ergodox Easy. And uh, it, the company that makes uh, the Ergodox is a company called ZSA. They actually interviewed me one time. Uh, just a, a email interview where they asked me some questions. And it's actually published on their website. So if you go and uh, want to purchase either the Ergodox Easy or their new model, the Moonlander, you will see an interview of me on their website. So that was very cool. But the Ergodox Easy and the Moonlander both, they're not cheap keyboards, but once you start using these split keyboards, you kind of get used to them and you could never go back to a standard 110 key keyboard. I just couldn't do it. The Ergodox Easy, when I bought it, I want to say I paid about $365 for it. 
the moon lander that I bought just a few months ago, uh, maybe six months ago, the moon lander cost me uh, about 350 or as well. It's not cheap keyboards, but honestly, they're built really well, and, and I just love the things. Uh, there's not much difference between the ErgoDox Easy and the Moon Lander. The only real difference is the thumb clusters. There's six keys here on the ErgoDox and th on the thumb clusters, where on the Moon Lander, you only have four keys. And I think that's a smart decision, just going with four keys on the thumb clusters, because really your thumbs, can they really navigate six individual keys? Probably not. I think four is plenty. Some of the other stuff that's on this desk, uh, you saw earlier, the Rode PSA-1 scissor arm. This is just a microphone arm. This works nicely on desks that are not terribly wide. Again, the three-foot wide desk here, it just didn't work on. I've got two of these PSA-1 uh, scissor arms, so they're really well built, and they hold weight. Like a, if you got some heavy microphones, they'll actually hold them up. You know, they won't sag that much, and you can tighten them up. You can adjust them a little bit. And uh, right, right now, it's holding another Electro Voice 27ND. I've got two microphones in here because sometimes I may want to actually uh, be able to record two people at the same time. Either me interviewing somebody or outsourcing some work. Somebody wants to do some kind of podcast and wants me to record it, maybe them and a partner, I can do that here. I've actually already talked to some people about doing that. And I've actually done some test recordings in this uh, this room with people actually uh, using these microphones and me uh, editing a little audio for them. I, I don't know how much of that kind of side gig I will do, but the fact that I have some microphones and I have some audio equipment does allow me, you know, some flexibility, you know, when people, you know, are willing to pay me for that kind of work. Obviously, I can do that for them. This random microphone stand that's just sitting on the desk, this is a, a gator stand, and uh, it's just a short little microphone arm. I've had that for a while. Right now, I, I don't really have a spot for it. I, I guess I could put it on a shelf or something right now. I just threw it on the desk just to have it sitting there. Uh, behind that, we have the Furman Power Conditioner. That's basically, you know, your surge protector. It's got six plugs, and I've got three of the Furman Power Conditioner strips here. because, And these are, uh, I believe, 15-foot cords that come with them. Because I wanted to be able to get anywhere I wanted to in this office. So, so I've got that. I've also got two other ones that are filled with the equipment behind all of this. There's two there. And those two I've had for a while because obviously I had all this equipment, most of it anyway, plugged in at my house where I was recording. And I really like the Furman power conditioners. They've got good reviews. They're not cheap though. <laughs> they're not uh, They're not terribly expensive, but I mean, for a power strip, I mean, I, I want to say I paid 30 or 40 bucks a piece for these. I could be wrong about that, but I remember they're they're not cheap as far as your standard surge protectors but you know I, I'm, I'm trying to protect some of this expensive equipment so that's why i went with that also Furman is also the power conditioner strip that is on my audio server rack here and it's got eight plugs in the back plus it's got one here in the front so nine total plugs and how i power this thing is actually with the Furman power conditioner it's got a on off switch and because everything on the audio server rack is plugged in to the Furman power conditioner. I just hit that button and everything powers off or turn it on and everything powers up. So that's really convenient. Now for you guys that have been following the channel for a while, you guys have seen all the equipment that is on this audio server rack before. So I'm just gonna very briefly go over it really quickly. This is the Pin Elcom, uh, it's a LED strip. And you have your choice of blue, red or green. Right now I'm going with blue. All it does is just shines a, a blue LED strip, some lighting across the face, you know, just for effect, just for effect on the videos, because obviously the audio server rack is in the backdrop of most of my videos. And then I have the Mackie Pro 12FX mixer. That thing cost about ah, $250, $300. And it's a 12 channel mixer. So I've got plenty of stuff to to work with there. And then the Furman power conditioner. Then we've got the Behringer Sonic Exciter. Really cool piece of equipment there. You can use that to boost uh, 
of the base range, or you can use it to boost or excite the mid ranges, which is really what it's for. So add, you know, a little more excitement to the mid ranges, which is um, typically what you may want to do on some instrumental recording. Or you know what I found that it works really nicely with voice. Below that, we have just an empty spot because I probably will eventually get a patch bay for this audio server rack. Uh, patch bays are typically 1U units, so I left room for, for that particular spot when and, or if I get a patch bay. Below that is the Natty preamp. So this is where the microphones, the two microphones you guys saw earlier, that one and that one, they are plugged in to the Natty preamp. They're actually plugged into channels uh, 7 and 8 just because that was the closest ones to the wall. One and two, obviously, are on this side. And then below that, I have two DBX 231Ss. Those are 31 band EQs, dual channel. So I could, you know, potentially plug four microphones into those two units. And below that, I have the two of the DBX 166XS. Those are compressor limiter gates. And those are also dual channel, meaning because I have two of them, I could plug as many as four microphones into those. And one interesting thing I didn't mention is the server rack itself. I forget the brand, uh, but it is well built. It is solid steel. It's heavy. It's built like a tank. It is five foot tall. So... Uh, not a small rack. Uh, one other thing I didn't mention is at the bottom of all the audio equipment, I do have some 2U drawers. And these just hold random, you know, like that's a cable drawer. <laughs> I've got a bunch of XLR cables in that thing. Uh, just anything related to, to audio cables is in that drawer. The one above it, I've got you know, like video cables, HDMI cables, and you know, some other peripheral devices on the side of the rack. I have some really, really cheap black plastic pegboard. <laughs> Why do I have that there? Well, it's it's really not, it's not even screwed in place. I've got, you know, some, some wing nuts here for the server rack that I just put there just so I could actually hang that right there. And the reason is, you know, in the videos, just for sake of having that as a backdrop in the videos, I didn't want that wide open and you guys to see the mess of cables that is behind this thing. Because, you know, with this much audio equipment, obviously, there's a lot of cables going on back there. I've got a lot of it tied up. I've tried to manage the cables so they're just, you know, they're easy to work with when I have to get back there. But it's still, it doesn't look good in the videos, you guys seeing that. So I ordered six of these very cheap plastic uh, pegboard panels. I've got three hanging on that side. I haven't bothered putting any on the other side because nobody really sees that. But if I need to, I've got the other three uh, plastic panels there. So, uh, but, you know, I'm putting them there. They're not fixed in place. They're just kind of temporary. I, I've obviously, you need to be able to get behind the server rack occasionally and work with those cables. So, the, again, the pegboards, they're just hanging there. I can quickly remove them and put them back anytime I need to. Looking around the room, I did have a chair in this office when I got in here. I do not like this chair. And I did not find this chair very comfortable. Uh, so what I did is I decided I was going to order a couple of chairs and I've already got one. You guys have probably seen this one in my recent videos. Now that is a gaming chair and it is made by a company. I want to say the company is OFS. I could be wrong about that. It's a OFS ESS gaming chair and that is their black and gray uh, gaming chair. And it typically on Amazon, it's it's got great reviews, like five star reviews, and it runs around one hundred and twenty dollars, I think, for the uh, suggested retail price on Amazon. I got a deal on it when I bought it. I want to say they were they had it on sale for like eighty or ninety bucks when I bought it. So not an expensive chair, but surprisingly comfortable. Now it is not a office chair like you're going to be sitting up straight and doing work and you can see it kind of has an angle to it sit back relax do some gaming so this is a you know sit back and be comfortable watching netflix on a monitor kind of chair this is not something where you need to be sitting up straight doing a lot of typing all day kind of chair what i'm going to do is i'm probably going to order a second chair and i'm going to have that as an actual working office chair and a gaming chair because I need two in here anyway. That way, depending on what kind of 
task I happen to be doing that day, I can switch between two different chairs. And finally, uh, the last bit of the office that you guys haven't saw is some of the other furniture that was in here was this drawer here. Uh, there's not much going on here. I've got uh, just some, some office stuff, some copy paper, some computer paper, some post-its sitting there. I've got a, a lamp there. So occasionally I will turn this lamp on. Sometimes you guys see that. It's, you know, got an orange lamp here. <laughs> this uh, glass here. Um, and of course, next to it is the sofa that I put in here. You guys saw when I got the sofa and moved it in here. And this, along with, of course, all the acoustic panels along all four walls, really helps soak up the reverb, the echo here. So that is the main reason why that is there. Although I have recorded one or two videos of me actually just sitting on that couch, you know, and then I'll just, you know, move one of the microphone boom arms somewhere where it can actually get to me here and of course because of the flexibility of the Elgato mounts and how easy it is to move you know camera around I can put that camera wherever I could put that right there if I wanted to I could sit <laughs> right here let me flip that camera around and now oh, all right <laughs> now you guys can see me but yeah there's so many little things I had to buy like it, it was strange like you when you you guys probably know hey you know obviously furniture, right? You need desks, you need chairs. Uh, yeah, maybe you need things like lighting, cameras, microphones, if you didn't already have some of that stuff. But it was the little stuff. There were so many little things I had to buy that really added up in cost. And like cables, I had to buy so many cables. Power strips, uh, XLR cables for microphones, because I'm running microphones much further away from my audio server rack now, you know, at, at my house, I only needed, you know, six feet of cable, maybe. You know, here, you know, I'm running nearly 15 feet of cable from the audio server rack to my main microphone. So I didn't have cables that long. So I actually, the other day, I went and bought three, I think, 25 foot XLR cables, just so I had three cables that could comfortably run, you know, anywhere, <laughs> probably along three walls of this room if I needed to, just just to have because it's, it's stuff you, you never even consider until you need to make a run like that. And then you realize, oh, I don't have the cable for that. And then Ethernet cable. I had to buy an Ethernet cable the other day, a Cat6 cable, because I had some Cat6 cable at the house, an extra one, and I brought it up here. It was six foot long, maybe, maybe even four foot long. But there's only one Ethernet port in this office, and where that's at and where my computer is at, I needed like 15 foot of cord. So I went... Made a run to Best Buy. I made a lot of runs to Best Buy just for little things, adapters and cords and uh, cable ties, zip ties, you know, things like that. Overall, though, I, I've been just really happy about this decision. I think uh, the last month, I, I felt good. Like, I, I've really, I'm not burnt out in any way. I don't feel overworked in any way. You know, having home separate from work, I think, has been a great decision. I think the content of the channel has been good. I know it's been a weird month, right? This this first month has been weird because as you're moving in, you barely have any equipment in the office and, and the audio was bad. Like that first week, there was so much echo in this room. And then I started adding acoustic panels and it got better and better and better. I added the couch, it got better. You know, moving the furniture, playing around with the lighting. You know, every video I've made for the past four or five weeks, if you looked at it, you know, probably every single video is different than the one before as far as the format, where I'm at in the camera frame, where the camera is angled, you know, where I'm actually uh, shooting at. And uh, that's been fun too, experimenting. And the cool thing is I, I like experimenting with this kind of stuff because I want to grow, obviously, as a, as a video content creator. And, you know, making a decision, a big decision, like, hey, I'm going to go get an office and record in that. A lot of people are like, man, that's crazy. No, it's not. You know, you got to, you got to expand, right? You got to, you got to take chances even occasionally, even though this wasn't, it's not a major expense renting an office as far as, you know, I can comfortably afford that. But, you know, sometimes it's good to branch out. You don't want to keep doing the same thing that you were doing. A lot of content creators are grinding, right? You see people on YouTube. Uh, it's just all about the grind, right? I'm just going to keep doing the same thing. Twitch live streamers. It's all about you know, me sitting here playing this game on a live stream every single day. And if I do it enough, you know, 
a million people are going to sub to me and I'm going to make all kinds of money because one day, one day it's all just going to catch fire. You know, it's just me doing the same thing. It hasn't worked yet. You know, I've been doing this for a year, two years, three years. But if I keep grinding one day, no, no, if it, if it's, it's just going to be exactly the same, right? You got to change, right? If, you know, you got, you need to constantly be growing and learning. I, I made a video about this the other day about the fixed mindset versus the growth mindset. You know, don't be, don't be happy. Don't, don't settle. Don't settle thinking your audio is good enough. Your video quality is good, and your cameras, good, your lighting's good enough. Whatever it is, your your scripting abilities, as far as you know, scripting. Uh, you know, it, for those of you that do show notes, right? <laughs> Obviously, I don't do a lot of show notes. You know, most of the time, I'm speaking off the cuff because I think that for me, that's more natural. For some people, they actually need to actually have an actual script that they read. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough. So again, this was just a, a quick tour of the office since people have asked me to make this video and I couldn't make the other video I wanted to make today because again, there's no internet currently here at the, the office. We've been without internet for a couple hours. So I figured I'd just make this video today and uh, I don't need internet obviously to record on my cell phone, right? <laughs> and I'm going to edit it in Caden Live. Thankfully, Caden Live doesn't need internet connection. <laughs> it's not like Audacity, the audio editor, which has to have internet connection so it can send your data to Russia. You know, thankfully, Caden Live doesn't do that. So I'll, I'll do a quick edit here. Uh, this obviously, I'm not going to, it's not a video that's going to require any real editing. I'd probably spend 15 minutes in Caden Live and then render it. And then I'll probably just put it on a flash drive and take it with me and I'll upload it from somewhere else if the internet's still out here. But anyway, uh, enough of me rambling. All right, guys. Peace.